So in previous versions of Serial, we never had a true drizzle. It was just a 2x up sample. But now in Serial 1.4, we have the same drizzle function that it was designed for the Hubble Space Telescope. And it was developed for the purposes of combining undersampled and dithered images, which allowed NASA to recover detail and resolution from the images from the Hubble itself. So in this video, we're not going to do a deep dive into drizzle itself as an algorithm, but I'm going to show you how you can drizzle, obviously, within Serial. We'll start with a provided script that Serial has given us with this new version as well as go through the process manually. So let's get to it and check it out. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. So we're going to start with the simplest way of doing a 1x drizzle with your one shot color data. And the reason you may want to do a 1x drizzle is like I mentioned in my spectrophotometric color calibration video, if you 1x drizzle your data, it's not increasing the resolution of your image, but the, the 1x drizzle will allow you to have that much more accurate color correction when you run SPCC. So like I said, this is the easiest way. It's the easiest way because Cyril has provided a script for us to do that. So if we come up in the scripts, in Cyril script files, the OSC pre-processing Bayer drizzle. So instead of debayering like we normally would with the OSC pre-processing script, it is doing the drizzle. So they refer to it as a Bayer drizzle sometimes. Now this script, as far as the settings that can be used for drizzle, it's set to, like I said, a 1x. It's also using a pixel fraction of 1. And for the kernel setting, it's using a square kernel, just so you guys are aware. And square is generally where you want to be most of the time anyways. But second thing, similar to the OSC pre-processing script, your working directory requires your biases, darks, flats, and lights with the relative files inside of each of them. Once you have that in place, come up and hit the blue home button and set your working directory, click open, and then again, scripts, serial script files, and then the OSC pre-processing Bayer drizzle script. So that'll take a few minutes, obviously depending on your data and your computer. Do keep in mind though, drizzling your data does increase the time it takes to get through this whole process. So if you notice it's taking a little bit longer, that's why. All right, so the script has completed and I am just gonna come up into image processing, stretches, and histogram transformation just to give this an auto stretch. I'm not gonna do anything more to it. I did the same thing with the same set of data, running it through the OSC pre-processing script so we can do a side-by-side -side of here's the image with the drizzle and here's the image without the drizzle. So we'll apply that stretch, hit close. I'm gonna save it. And then we're gonna save it off as a TIFF file so I can open it up in something that we can look at both of the images at the same time in. We'll just call this drizzle, no compression, and it come back over into my working directory. So there's my no drizzle, and then this is the one with the drizzle. So we'll put the drizzle over on the right, no drizzle on the left, and let's just zoom in ever so slightly just to take a closer look at stuff. And you can see there is a difference between them. The, again, the left-hand side's no drizzle, right-hand side is drizzle but nothing really significant, right? It's a minor change, but it gets down to just being as accurate with your data as you want to be. Like I said, a good use case for using this script for doing a 1x drizzle is when you would jump in and do your color calibration using the SPCC tool. So I just wanted to go over that first, show you the quick differences between the two with and without the drizzle. So let's jump back into Serial now and we'll go over how to do all this stuff manually. So I'm just gonna close and reopen Cyril just so my console screen gets all cleared out and there's nothing else left behind. And we're gonna work on the same set of data. So I'm gonna delete my process and my masters and my final stack. All right, so with Cyril reopened, the first thing when you're doing something manually, you do need a folder, or you should create a folder to work in so you don't end up with all of these files that Cyril will generate all mixed in with, with everything else. So I'm just gonna follow suit with what the script usually does and that's creates a process directory. And then I'm gonna come up to my home button and set it to the process directory. We'll start with our conversion tab. We're gonna add all of our lights. So into our lights, select them all, control A on Windows and hit add. Sequence name, we'll just call it lights and then click convert. And then over to my calibration, I have master files created for my darks and flats. So I have that set currently. I'm not gonna go through step-by-step -step how to do this manually. I'm assuming that you guys know how to do that if you're looking how to drizzle manually, but I do have a video that goes over stacking manually with everything if you're interested and you need to know how to do that first. 
I'll leave it up in the corner here and as well as down in the description. An important piece if you're going to drizzle your data is on this calibration tab. Make sure that debayer before saving is not selected. If you debayer during your calibration process, then you'll be back to the standard interpolation mode. You will not be able to drizzle during the registration piece. So I'm going to get these calibrated and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so with our files all calibrated now, we're going to move over into our registration, and this is where your drizzle happens now. I know it can be a little confusing where it says use interpolation and use drizzle. These appear to be buttons, and they're not. They're just, think of them as tags, and the highlighted tag is indicating what you're going to be using. So since we did not debayer during calibration, we're going to be drizzling during registration. If we were to debayer, then use interpolation would be in blue and use drizzle would be gray. So just the opposite of what we're seeing now. So scaling, just like the script, it defaults to a 1x scale. The pixel fraction will set the size of the droplet taken from the input image. And a good rule of thumb is that this number should roughly be the reciprocal of your scaling factor. Then we also have our droplet model. Like I said, square is probably what you'll be using most of the time. Specifically, if you're going to be using it for photometry like we are now, that's why my scaling is still set to one. But you could also, if you're doing the 1x drizzle just so you have more accurate colors in SPCC, you can not only use square, but you could use point as well as turbo. But those are the only three that you should be using, again, if you're just doing this as, as a 1x drizzle for SPCC reasons. The documentation goes over each and every one of these droplet models. So if you really want to get down in the weeds about it, go read the documentation. I've said it before, the developers have done a fantastic job at putting information together for us on how to use everything within the software. Include master flat in the initial pixel weighting. This is optional. But if you do tick the box, you want to make sure that your flat has been specified in your calibration tab. And basically what this option does is when it's going through its initial pixel weighting, it'll use less pixels from the vignetting parts of your image and more inducive to the areas of the image that we're concerned with. Like I said, this is optional. You can use it. The gain is very, very minor. So something you can play with. I'm gonna leave it off for now and I'm just gonna click go register. And with registration complete, now you just stack as you normally would. I'm going to turn on output normalization and RGB equalization. I'll leave the default file name in place and just hit start stacking. And stacking is complete. So what else come out of a linear view? Go into an auto stretch view. And there is our 1x drizzle done manually per the settings we put forth in the registration tab. Now let's take a look at upscaling to 2x. And generally, like I said in the beginning of the video too, I'm not gonna get into whether or not you should drizzle. The common thought is to drizzle when your data is undersampled. So your camera isn't a good match for your telescope possibly. Uh, again, keep in mind that was the intent for the Hubble Space Telescope when they developed this algorithm for them. Not only was it a mono camera, but it was also undersampled data. So they needed a way to increase that resolution. So I'm gonna leave it up to you guys on whether or not you feel you should do any kind of an upscale drizzle there's lots of back and forth all over the internet on no you shouldn't yes you should on well sample data again i'll leave that up to you okay so let's go through drizzling but we're going to drizzle at 2x this time just because i want to show you guys one more thing if you're going to use drizzle to actually upscale your resolution so uh, same set of data not necessarily undersampled but just for an example and we'll set the pixel fraction to 0.5 since that is the reciprocal of the scaling that we have set. We'll leave the droplet model to square and then click go register. All right, so with registration complete, I'm just gonna stack this real quick and then we'll come back and talk about some of the oddities you may see when you're using more than a 1x drizzle with the tool. All right, so my 2x drizzle stack is complete and we're in linear, so let's jump over into auto stretch. And what I wanted to show you is if you're in your registration sequence here and you open up your file list, load another image, that's fine. As you go through these, you may see some oddities now. And I don't, I mean, we got this crazy line here, but basically you can end up with some null pixels. And a better example of that is from the documentation. So I'm gonna bring that up on the screen here. So this one is an example of moray patterns. And it refers to, like I was saying, about having null pixels. And this type of stuff, if you see it, is normal. Some of the kernels do compensate for this by limiting the pixel fraction so that all the output pixels will receive some input, but others do not. So like I said, it's not anything really to worry about. As long as you have enough input frames and the dither positions are suitably scattered across, then all the pixels will receive coverage from enough of the other pixels that the output stack will be fine. But if you are having problems and you have a lower number of input frames, 
then you can try a different drizzling kernel. Um, you know, go from the square and try one of the other ones that are available in that list and that will take care of it. But you only really need to worry about it if your final stack doesn't look correct to you. The other example is patching this within the image itself. And this one will occur if there ends up being too many null pixels. It typically occurs when you're using the point turbo or Lanchos kernels, and they can be fixed by just going back and using the square of a Gaussian kernels, or by simply just having more input frames. So there may be some tweaking you need to do depending on your data, but all in all, everything should work out. I just wanted to point that out to you guys. And one final thing for those of you out there shooting in mono, with the, with the exception of me saying not to debayer during calibration, obviously you're shooting mono, so there is no debayering, but the registration and the stacking, everything, the drizzle settings are the same for those of you shooting mono as well. So I hope that was helpful for everybody and gave you enough information to go and play with the new drizzle function within Cyril. I know it was one of the features that have been asked for for a long time. And once again, the devs have come through and given us what we've asked for. Before we go, I just want to say thanks to all my members here on YouTube and on buymeacoffee.com. I appreciate everybody's support. Thanks to all of you that watch the videos, like, share, and subscribe. Use my affiliate links in the description to help support the channel. Buying merchandise in my store. It's all very much appreciated. So that's a wrap for this video. We'll see you on the next next one in clear skies.